Time in fellow bats, and welcome back to another set review for Pokemon TCG. I know it's been a while since we've done a lot of Pokemon TCG content, but we're going to start to pick it up. I've said um, over on Twitch we do a lot of streaming still, and I have mentioned over there that we are going to try and get back into it, come Forbidden Light, and of course we're going to do so by showcasing a set review. Uh, with that being said, we have a bunch of things coming along. If you guys are in the Toronto area in the next couple weeks and you play Pokemon TCG, you might be able to find me over at some events. Um, I'll be joining a Dolly's pre-release um, this weekend, March, or sorry, April 21st. Um, I'm pretty excited for it. For uh, Forbidden Light, of course, that's why we're kind of going over this. It gives me a, a refresher of the card list itself. Um, as well as we are going to be attending Toronto Regionals, uh, I was invited with a friend over on, uh, Twitch named Sierra, she, uh, she wanted me to go, so I was like, yeah, sure, let's do this, and, uh, so we're going to Toronto Regionals, so we're gonna have a lot of TCG content coming up, uh, both on YouTube and Twitch, so keep an eye out for that, let me know if you guys are coming as well, I'd like to see a few guys there, because I haven't got a clue who anybody is, so it'd be, it'd be fun to meet up. Anyway, let's get into this, because this is going to take us a fair bit to go through. Uh, Forbidden Light is our newest set coming out. It is based on Kalos, which is kind of exciting, because I always came back to Kalos uh, in 6th Gen, so I'm kind of coming back and doing the same thing with this one being a Kalos set. Um, we're going to start with the Alolan Executor. Try and bring it up so you guys can see it a little better. There's the artwork here. Kind of nice and dopey. He, he's not coming out of the image, though, which is kind of nice. Uh, but he takes up so much, it's so cool. Um, he's a really cool Pokemon, not, I wouldn't say he's like meta breaking or anything, he's kind of just an alright Pokemon, but for one grass energy you can do 20 damage, and you'll do 20 more for each basic energy type in your discard pile. I don't know where this is coming from. Anyway, uh, so that means you can have a maximum of 120 damage I believe that is with this guy. Uh, for one grass energy that's not too bad, if you're still running like Rainbow Xerneas, this might be an opportunity to set this guy up, maybe throw in some, uh, Rainbow energy, so you can use the grass, and there you go. You got a bunch of energy types. Maybe this is the one to work out. I don't know. <laughs> it seems all right. It seems like a cool idea. Uh, next up, we have Obama Snow. Now, Obama Snow did come out in the previous set as a water type. Um, so this one has Blessing of the Frost Covered Trees. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may attach a grass energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. I believe we had the water version of that um, in the last set. Again, I didn't do an Ultra Prism review, so some of these cards are still kind of new to us, but let, always don't don't hesitate to tell me if I did something wrong, okay? Okay, and let me of course know what you guys are expecting from the set as well. Um, next up we have the Scatterbug, uh, Spupa, and Vivion line. Uh, Vivion is here. Nicely colored as always. Uh, but unfortunately it's just got vivid power. 50 damage for one grass energy. Your opponent's active poke was now poison and asleep. Now of course they have to try and use a Guzmore some way to get out of the active. But this isn't going to be something you're going to use off of a stage 2. So unfortunately not, not anything competitive on that. Whoops, hit the wrong button. Um, next up we have Go Goat. Look at that art. He's so cool looking. He's got that milk drink for one grass. You get to flip two coins for each hedge. You deal, uh, you heal 40 damage from this Pokemon, uh, and then you have double edge for one grass, two colorless, 120 damage. This Pokemon does 30 damage to itself. So nothing over the top. Is what it is. Um, our first Ultra Beast of the set. Now, mind you, I'm looking forward to some of the cards that are coming out in this that are Ultra Beasts. Um, one of my favorites is Poipul, just like everybody else's, so Naganandel is going to be pretty cool. Uh, pronunciation, I apologize if I say it wrong. Uh, anyway, Fermosa, it's got High Jump Kick for one colorless, uh, you get to do 20 damage, cool. And then two grass, one colorless, you're going to get White Ray for 90 damage. If you have one prize card remaining, this will do 180 damage total, uh, which is cool. Um, I, I don't know if I see this as a one, a one card put in to a deck, uh, especially because its second ability, or second attack is pretty, pretty significant on the one prize remaining. So you, that means you've already had to have taken a, like a first turn prize early on for this to be even warrant because you're going to be trying to take out EXs, which are two prizes. So that means you were technically behind to have had this. So Fair Morsa is really like a, uh... Like, a, I, I've already gotten into a good position, and this is the last card I need to take it? I don't know. Um, not a bad card. 
I, I'd like to hear what you guys have to think. I think it's going to be all right. Maybe I at best a one of in certain decks. Um, next up, we do have the Alola Marowak. We got through those grass cards pretty quickly. Uh, we have the Alola Marowak here. He, I like him because he's got the poke, uh, like the bust up in the background. Um, you got the Limbo Limbo for nothing. Uh, you get to search your deck for up to two basic energies, and you get to attach them to your Pokemon any way you like, uh, which is really nice. It's a very cool um, ability. Uh, then you get to shuffle your deck out after all. Also, and then you have the Alola Circle, two colorless, 20 damage detect this, 20 damage times the number of Pokemon you have in play with Alola in their name. So this is like building an Alola deck. You want Alola Marowak, you can go Alola the Exeggutor. Uh, and what's great about this guy is he's got no color energy, so that is awesome. And Limbo Limbo literally lets you search it up to two basics of anything. So anything at all you can kind of make an Alolan deck, which is kind of what this thing is kind of uh, aiming towards, I guess. Uh, we've got Heatran. We had the steel version of this guy in the previous set. He's got Guard Press for one uh, one fire. Sorry, yes, one fire, one colorless. You do 30 damage. Any damage done to this Pokemon is reduced by 30. Uh, I guess that's cool. Uh, it, it's, it's a cool attack. Um, then you've got two fire, one colorless. For boiler impact, 130 damage, you discard two energy, so pretty standard. Uh, again, we've seen them before. Um, we are going to move on to our Fennekin lines here. So we have the new Fennekin art. Uh, this is the, I believe this is Ken Sigamori, yep, which is awesome looking. Um, and then we've got our new Delphox, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, it's got a new ability for Magical Torch. Once during your turn, you may leave your opponent's active Pokemon burned. So if you're playing a burn deck, this is kind of cool because if you've got anything, any other abilities that kind of force that habit, then this this makes it easier to get off. Uh, and then you're going to have Fire Spin for 2 Fire, 2 Colorless, 150 damage, and you get to discard 2 energies from this Pokemon. So you do re need to have that recursion if you're going to be using Delphox as the main attacker. Um... Which I really don't think you'd be doing if you're going all that way up to a stage 2 for Magical Torch. I, I don't know. Let me know if you guys are planning on it. Uh, Pyroar is our next one here. It's got that Lysander power in the back. We can see that's going to be a hollow. Looks kind of neat. Uh, it's got a nerve when your opponent plays an item card or supporter card. Prevent all effects of that card done to this Pokemon. So you cannot Guzma a uh, Pyroar, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then there's other things like Hypnotoxic Laser can't affect Pyroar. That's also cool. Uh, I don't really know if that's going to affect play too much, but it is what it is. Uh, then we've got the Dominant Fangs as its attack. One fire, two colors, 80 damage. Uh, if Lysander's Labs is in play, this attack does 60 more damage. So not too bad. Uh, the energy cost is somewhat reasonable, uh, being as it's one color. Er, sorry, it's a double colorless and a fire energy. So it's a two attachment, and you essentially can do 160 damage. For a non-GX uh, non attacker, that's not bad. You're not hitting high numbers, but it is something, I guess. Uh, next up, we've got a redo for Polkia. I believe Polkia was a dragon type in Ultra Prism. Now he's a water type in uh, Forbidden Light. He's got that spatial control for one water energy. You get to move any number of energy cards from your bench Pokemon to this Pokemon, which is really good, because a lot of the time you can do Aqua Patch, you can do uh, Max Elixir, you can get all these energies onto the board, and then you can bring them up for one energy, which is kind of nice. Then you've got Hydro Press. Uh, for three colorless, you're going to do 60 damage. This attack does 20 more damage for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. And you're going to need at least five of them. So you can have for some pretty decent damage. Um, because you're going to need five for that zero vanish. Three water, two colorless, 150 damage. Your opponent shuffles all energy attached to their Pokemon into their decks. So that can slow your opponent down quite a bit. If you, uh, did I say Pokemon? I meant your opponent. I don't know if I said anything or not, but either way. Um, it can definitely slow down your opponent a lot if you hit this at the right time. Like, if they're trying to set up, like, a Volcanion where they've got massive board position, you're like, no, 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 no. Zero vanish. All those energies go straight back in. They can't have them from discard. Volcanion can't hit them. Then uh, they have to redraw all that, so that's a whole lot of energy just being sitting there back in their deck. They may not be able to draw back out because, you know, they may have used their professor's letters or other things, so who knows. <laughs> um... Either way, it's a cool GX. Again, I get to hype it up because I didn't do Ultra Prism. Um, moving on, uh, we do have a brand new Furoki. Look at this guy. It's the same, uh, it's the Ken Sigamori artwork, which is cool. Um, he's got the ability Frubbles. If this Pokemon has any water attached, any water energy attached to it, its retreat cost is zero. 
Why it's not just zero in the beginning is beyond me. It's a Froki. Um, he's got flop, 20 damage, but that's really not what we're looking for. I just like looking over the abilities because it's kind of cool. I don't know why they bother putting this as an ability when he has, he, he might as well have just had zero retreat. Anyway, um, we have a new Frogadier. He is, of course, not the Water Duplicates version. He has Quick Shuriken when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon. You may put two damage counters on one of your opponents. That's right! We have Bats back in Frogs. So, if you guys remember the um, Golbat and Crobat from Phantom Forces, this is essentially what they're doing here. You can get some damage down by sniping with the Frog and your Greninja lines here. So, if you only need like one Water Duplicate, um, Obviously, that's going to rotate soon, but like you could do one uh, water duplicate and then go boom, frog in ears. But unfortunately, you have to evolve these, so that's not really going to work either. I don't know how you get this to work properly. Either way, we'll see how it goes. Um, I know a lot of you guys are definitely interested in this big, big bad guy here being Greninja GX. His artwork looks cool. His ability is Wind Shuriken, which is a, pretty much identical to Quick Shuriken, except you're going to do an additional. Uh, additional damage counters. So, once you've evolved from Frogadier to Greninja, you've essentially set up five damage counters on your opponent, uh, which isn't too bad. Uh, it's not as much as it was back in Phantom Forces, because the HP um, numbers have definitely skyrocketed at this point, Because but back then, like, the Primals were really the only ones really hitting that 240 mark, where now GXs are really hitting that on a regular basis, so, I don't know. 50 damage is 50 damage, I give it that, but I don't know if it'll be something to last in the long run. Anyway, he's got Haze Slash, 1 Water, 2 Colors, 110 damage. You may shuffle this Pokemon All Cards Tattoo into your deck, which is a cool um, way to get them back in if you don't have the ability to scoop them up or um, Acerola or anything like that, uh, which are a lot of opportunities now that you can get this little combo to kind of go off and you can get more damage down that way. Um, then you also have Shadow Assassin, 1 Water, 2 Colorless. This is his GX. Uh, this attack does 130 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So, snipe whatever you want, you're hitting them for a lot. So if they've got that massive target in the back, let's get rid of it before he does anything worthwhile. Which is kind of cool. Moving on. We've got Clyzer. Well, that, 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 it blew up pretty good. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Clotzer has standby, one water, uh, during your next turn. This Pokemon's sharp shooting attack does 120 damage, uh, which is absolutely phenomenal if you can get it to last that long, but he's not bulky at all. He's got 100 HP, so you really aren't expecting this guy to hit two turns. Like, he, he shouldn't be making it two turns. Uh, but anyway, Sharpshooting is the same cost for one water. You naturally will do 40 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Anything you want. You can snipe it. You can hit the active. It does not matter. You will hit something. Um, or you can go for standby and then do 120. So, uh, this guy's just going to be filler. As far as I'm concerned, he's filler. Um, next up, we've got Aurorus. Now, Aurorus, uh, the Froth Fossil Pokemon do return. They do have a new way of being able to evolve from the unidentified fossil, uh, which is really nice. Um, this Aurorus here does have some, as far as I remember, they had some pretty cool abilities. I don't know. Uh, one water, two colorless, it has frost wall, 50 damage during your opponent's next turn, prevents all damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's evolved Pokemon, which is a huge part of meta right now. Evolutions are a big thing. Of course, you're not going to be stopping those buzz walls or buzz walls anytime soon, but you're, you're going to stop a good chunk of the current meta, and that is a huge thing. You can definitely stop them in their tracks and make them force use their Guzmas and other ways to eliminate targets uh, before they're actually affecting Aurorus. Uh, then it's also got Blizzard Burn, 2 Water, 2 Colorless, 150 damage. This Pokemon can't use Blizzard Burn on the next turn, so that's not bad. You know what? 150 damage behind the Frost Wall. If they are all just evolved Pokemon, also, let's keep in mind that this Pokemon actually has 160 HP. Now, it is technically a stage 2, but really, that's not bad. I gotta give it, it's not bad at all. Um, obviously not competitive. I'm, I'm not trying to say it's gonna be meta or anything, but it's cool. I like it. I think it'll do okay. Uh, in comparison to that Kaletzer we just saw, this is, like, gold. Um... Next up, we have Avalug. Look at him, looking like a table like he always does. Uh, we've got Ground Freeze, 80 damage. Your opponents can't play Stadium cards from their hand during their next turn. 
is this really going to change the game? Maybe. It might stop him from playing that Parallel City. It might stop him from getting um, that Brooklyn Hill down to help him get that Pokemon that they're looking for. Who knows? I don't see this being competitive. It's also got Skull Bash, 1 Water, 3 Colorless, 100 Damage. Eh, not, not worth for me. Finally, I got that hair. Anyway, um... We have our first Prism Star being Volcanion Prism Star. I do like the artwork on this thing, so even if I can't, say, play this thing, I'd like to have one. Um, he looks cool. Of course, you can only have one Prism Star with the same name in your deck, uh, and if he goes to the discard pile, instead he will go to the Lost Zone. Um, for those of you who do not know, who've just been following my side, who don't know much about it, Lost Zone is essentially removed from games, so you can't access it. Um, unless there are cards eventually that could be out there that make access of just Lost Zone. Anyway, he's got the ability Jet Geyser. Once during your turn, you may discard a Water Energy from your hand, and if you do, your opponent switches their active Pokemon with one of their bench. Uh, so you don't get to choose. It's essentially Escape Room. But then you have Sauna Bomb, 3 Water, 100 damage. This attack does 20 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So it's not a bad card. It's not amazing. But you can force switches, you can force things to come into your way. There's a bit of a splash, there's a wave, there's... I'm not overly thinking this is going to be a meta card, but it'll be cool. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on it as well. Um, we've got a Raquinid here. Uh, that's our next big one. I don't remember if this was Grass-type or not. I apologize to you guys if it was. Um, he's got Bubble for 1 water, 30 damage to the coin. If Hedge, your opponent's active Pokemon is paralyzed. And then you've got Bubble Trap, 2 colorless, 40 damage. Uh, if any of your Pokemon use Bubble during your last turn, this attack does 80 more damage. So that I like because it doesn't specify that it's over the previous turn. Like, if I get Guzmet out, Bubble Trap will still work because Bubbles were played the previous turn. But that being said, it's only 120 damage on 100 base HP Pokemon, and I have to use Bubble first. So, like Claw Etzer, this thing isn't really going to be doing much, in my opinion. Let me know, again, anytime I say something out of whack that you guys don't know, let me hit, hit me up in the comments. Let me hear what you guys have to say. Always better that way. Um, we see Magnazone here. He definitely has a uh, copy in Ultra Prism. Uh, he's Steel Type in that one. He's doing fantastic work with those uh, good old uh, Steel Necrozmas. Uh, we've got the Magnetic Circuit going on here. This time he hits the Lightning Energies instead of the uh, Steel Types. So if you want to get those Zerka Trees going or those Tapu Kokos going, this guy's definitely going to help you out a lot more. Uh, and then you've got Zap Cannon, which we're really not going to try and set this up because it's 3 Lightning and a Colorless for 130 damage, uh, and then you can't use it on the following turn. So please, we're not trying to use this guy as the main attacker. It's his ability that's absolutely mwah. Um, next up we do have a new lightning type in, in Heliolisk. Again, we, we get a pretty shoddy attempt at trying to get the artwork up. Um, but we do have Gnaw, which is awesome. We get to do 20 damage for a colorless energy. And then we have Shockwave. For 3 colorless, we're going to hit 80 damage and you get to flip a coin. If it has the Defang Pokemon, it's now paralyzed. Uh, I sense pre-release card. Not, or like, nothing worthwhile, just part of that pre-release deck sort of thing. Um, our last electric Pokemon is something that I think his artwork looks pretty good. Uh, is Zerkatry, our another Ultra Beast we got here. Um, we get Flash Bullet for one Lightning. You get to do 20 damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is confused. So that's actually really good in some electric decks because um, it does give you that opportunity to have another status effect, force your opponent to switch out, and maybe or go for that attack and potentially do 30 damage themselves. And then you have Cable Ram, two Lightning, a Colorless, 100 damage. If you have three cards remaining. Exactly. Three cards remaining. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Um, it's like I said about Faramosa, it's, it's on the odd numbers, which makes it very difficult to get off, because again, you are more than likely going to be taking out GXs. Now, we are all known that we can take out an Alolan Vulpix or a baby Pokemon, and this, this can come into play there. I like Zerka Trees a little bit more, because three prizes is a little bit more common than five, um, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, now we've got Rotom. We saw a lot of these guys in the previous set, and I do apologize. I don't remember if the regular Rotom was part of it, but I do know all of his forms were, and they all they pretty much shared all the colors. And this one's your psychic one. Uh, he's got Rotomotor. Um, if there are nine or more tool cards in your discard, ignore the attacks, uh, the attack cost of this Pokemon. Uh, for three psychic, you have Plasma Slash, 120 damage. This Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. 
So he gets some good damage out, but first off, he's got 70 HP, so he is a very big lightweight. And two, he can't attack on the next turn. So you do need to have some other follow-up attacker. Um, and if you're running just these guys, you're going to have to have as many tool cards as you can get. Remember, it's not items, it's tools. Uh, next up is Yuxi, looking pretty happy as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he's got that memory skip for one psychic, 30 damage, choose one of your opponent's actives, uh, their active Pokemon's attacks, sorry, and then you, during their opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon can't use it. So 30 damage, stall. 30 damage, but stall. Kind of an interesting thing, especially when they've only got one attack, other than the GX, or you can force them to not be able to use their GX. Um, of course, he's only got 60 HP, so he's not taking a hit, but let me know. I think it's kind of cool, kind of tacky, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, next up, we've got the second uh, of the trio. Interesting to see that these trios in here, considering these aren't Sinnoh mods, but again, I think these are part of the Sinnoh... I think the Sinnoh block was the middle one, I don't remember. So again, I apologize if that's uh, a bit of a misconception on my part. Uh, but we do have Mesper here. Has the ability Silence Wave. If you have Azelf in play, your opponent's Pokemon have no resistance. So they definitely are trying to support the three of them. Uh, even though nothing is going on about Yuxi. Uh, I'm trying to read before him. Yeah, no, I don't think anything has to do with Yuxi. Uh, then he's got Mind Splash, two colorless, 20 damage. Uh, if Yuxi is on the bench, I apologize, there's it is right there! Should have just kept on reading. If Yuxi is on your bench, the stack does 50 more damage. So... Uh, you have no resist. Your opponents have no resistance if you have Azelf, and you're gonna do 50 more if you have Yuxi. Um, we need more to make these things usable, but at least they've got some synergy amongst them. Um, next up is Azelf, that aforementioned Azelf, because Mesper is partners with him. Uh, he's got that Psychic Abduction, one colorless. You can only use this attack if you go second, and only on your first turn. Shuffle one of your opponents, bench Pokemon, and all cards attached to it into their deck. So if you go second and they're trying to set up a Benchmon rather than their active, you can set them back a turn. Um, else you could just hit one of their bench Pokemon and be like, yo, we're going to get rid of that and you're going to have to restart it. Like Eevee, if they evolved, something like that. You know, like, you get an opportunity there. Uh, he's also got Hypno Wave, one colorless, 10 damage, your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. Honestly, there's not much going for these Mons in terms of me wanting to build a deck around them. Especially not the fact that Mesprit literally needs everything to have Azelfs and uh, Yuxis on it to be worthwhile. Uh, and the other two are really not phenomenal in my opinion. But they have pretty cool art and I think that's enough. Um, next up we have the Meowstic line here. Oh look at him, he's sleeping. Typical cat. Uh, he's got Teleport Break for one Psychic, 20 damage, switch this Pokemon with one of your bench, okay. And then we've got Psychic, one Psychic, one Colorless, 30 damage, this act does 30 more damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So if we're hitting something like a uh, Buzzwall who needs three Fighting Energies on it, we can hit for 90, 120, with the Super Effective, you're super, he's a bug, is he, s I think he is? I might be wrong. Anyway. You hit, hit for 120 naturally, so that's cool enough. If you hit for super effective, you hit for 220, or 240. My math's bad. Um, so I guess not bad. Um, uh, we've got a special Hone Edge here who's got an abil uh, ability that I'd like to try and go over. Uh, if this Pokemon is your active and is knocked out by damage from an opponent's Pokemon, put three damage counters on your, one of your opponent's Pokemon. So it doesn't have to be the active, it could be whatever it is that's actually kind of cool. If they kind of guzma it up because they know it's going to be your next big attacker, they kind of get penalized for it. That's kind of cool. Uh, we do have the brand new Aegislash. I want to just get this guy up here. Look at that artwork. He's got some pretty nice dynamics going on. He's got the Record of Death uh, for one color, so the defending Pokemon is damaged by an attack during your next turn. It is knocked out. Does not matter about the damage. Does not matter about the damage. Just hit it. Be like, yo, tap tap. It's gone. With that being said, you've got Draining Slash, which does need three Psychic Energies, which is a little bit harder to get off. Um, but you hit for 90. Again, all you need to do is hit Record of Death and then uh, Draining Slash. The damage doesn't really matter at that point if you're going with that combo. Otherwise, 90 damage is not really worth it on a stage 2. But you, did, you do get to heal 30 damage from this Pokemon, so... It's alright. I think the record of death's really cool. Um, and it doesn't specify that it has to be from Aegislash. 
that the attack is being hit. So they'll definitely want to switch out, but they will lose that. Like, if you Guzma, for instance, if, sorry, if they Guzma, for instance, they will lose out on the, like, the record of death will be gone. So, uh, just keep a reminder on that. Next up, we've got probably the biggest star from the set, um, being Malamar. A lot of people are excited for this card. Um, he's got Psycho Recharge. Once during your turn, you may attach a Psychic Cannery card from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. This is kind of a way to, for example, Aegis Slash here, get those three Psychic Energies out pretty early. You can discard using, say, Trade or some sort of Sophocles ability or whatever you're doing to get those Psychic Energies into your discard, play one, and then grab one with your Malamar. So there's two opportunities there, and then obviously if you've got a second Malamar, you can get three energies going pretty quickly onto your bench stage of Slash, and you can just set it up in the active. So it's a cool combo. Malamar is definitely going to be a very big uh, card coming up, so definitely keep your eyes on it. Um, next up is Dragalgy. Look at that artwork. Uh, no, I don't think we're getting a hollow out of that. He just looks normal art. Um, I might be wrong. Um... He has Poison Bob. If the Pokemon is your active uh, and is damaged by an opponent's attack, even if this Pokemon is knocked out, the attacking Pokemon is now Poison. So that's kind of cool. We do damage, or we do get to Poison regardless. And then you have Twister, 1 Psychic, a Colorless, 60 damage, flip 2 coins for each heads, discard energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Uh, if both are Tails, sorry, if both are Tails, this attack fails. So, you either get... You either get a heads, get an energy for sure, but if you get both tails, you don't even do the damage. It, you just, you absolutely rolled a critical one on a d20 and just died. Sorry, my uh, my good old D&D &D life's coming back. Anyway, moving on to Hoopa. Look at him, he's got all his desserts, he's ready to party. Can I have one of those donuts? Um... He's got that Hyperspace Ring. For one psychic, you search your deck for up to two item cards, reveal them, and put them in your hand, then shuffle your deck afterwards. This seems very familiar and very reminiscent of his EX variant, um, at least if I recall correctly. And then he's also got Cybolt for one psychic, 10 damage from the coin if Hedge your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Um, you're definitely going to sub this guy in if you're going to be going for the Hyperspace Ring. That's really it. Really? Um, I really wanted to show this guy off because, A, I really love the artwork. Like I said, I really like Poipal. Um, he's got Spit Poison for one, col uh, one color. It's your opponent's active Pokemon is now Poison. And then you got Corpse Reviver. Uh, one Psychic, one color. If this Pokemon is knocked out during your opponent's next turn, your opponent does not take a prize. So you do not do any damage, but this is a cool way to set up and they cannot knock out your Poipal. And at two energies already, you're pretty much set up to go into Naga Nadel, uh, which I think he looks awesome, by the way. This, this Pokemon looks awesome. I can only say that so many times. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, he's got Beast Ride for one color, so you get to do 20 times damage. This damage does, sorry, this attack does 20 damage for each Ultra, ultra Beast you have in play. So barring maybe a Lele, try and only have your Ultra Beast, because this way you can do some damage. Uh, you can hit for 100, 100 damage, sorry, 120 damage for one colorless. That's actually really good. Um, if everything is an Ultra Beast, of course. Then you've got Jet Tackle, 1 Psychic, 2 colorless, uh, 110 damage. This attack's damage is not affected by a resistance. So keep that in mind, you'll always do 110, no problem. But you're not really going to do too much, like it's, it's not a lot of damage, so I don't know if he's going to be your main attacker, unless you're looking to take out like uh, Garbs and Espeons and stuff that are weak to it. Uh, or either way, it, it's it's a good attack for what he's doing. But his Stinger GX is kind of cool. Three colorless. Uh, each player shuffles their prize cards back into the deck, and then each player takes three cards from the top of their deck and puts them face down as their prizes. Now this can do a lot of changes to a game. This can either turn it around in your favor. This could make the game go a lot quicker if you're already in the advantage. Um, there's a lot of things that can happen here. So for example, I'm currently sitting at six prizes, my opponent's sitting at one, and it's like, okay, let's go for Stinger. Because at the very least, he can't win on the next turn, because now he's got three prizes, and I've taken three prizes. So now I'm gonna go to three prizes, tie the game up, 
And if I can set something else in the back, I can kind of come back from this if they can't take out my Naganondel on that turn. So this is kind of a cool situation. Uh, the other part too is, if we're both starting at 6, you can make this game go a lot quicker uh, by just going for that Stinger GX right away, hitting it down to 3 prizes and potentially winning it that way uh, if you do know that your next couple turns you've kind of got the game in hand. Um, so keep that in mind, you can speed it up, you can slow it down, you can make it way better in your favor. Um, don't usually do it if you're the one at one prize and they're the ones at six and then you stinger. That's kind of weird. Moving on. Uh, we do see there's a new Cubon for that Alolan Marowak. Um, we do have Torterra. Uh, I didn't see the other two in here, uh, but we do have Torterra here. Um, that's because Torterra, uh, Turtwig and, uh... Grottle uh, can't be ground type, it's just Torterra that's ground type. Uh, either way, uh, he has Giga Drain, two fighting, a colorless, 50 damage heal from this Pokemon, the same amount of damage you did to your opponent's active. So if you end up getting like a choice band or something, you do get to heal that extra little bit of damage. And then you have Earthquake, 180 damage, which is a nice number uh, for three fighting a colorless, which is not such a great energy spread. Um, but you do get to do, you do have to do 20 damage to each of your own Pokemon, so this could be both good and bad in the situation. But you can probably just use like a Mr. Mime or something to block the damage. Um, next up, we got the same thing that happened in the previous one where we don't have Chimchar or um, for some reason I cannot think of it, even though it's right in front of me, the Monfernal. Um, I can't think of the second, uh, the first stages. Uh, we do have the Infernape, who's Fighting type in this one, Fire type in Ultra Prism. Uh, you have Flaming Fighter, put six damage counters instead of two on your opponents, burn Pokemon between turns. So if you really wanted to, you could kind of make a Delphox uh, Infernape deck. It's really clunky already thinking of a state two stage twos, but you can instantly burn them and do uh, six damage in between turns. And then you got Burst Punch, one Fighting, one Colorless, 50 damage, your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. So there you go, that's Infernape. Huge upgrade to Garchomp in my opinion is this. Uh, so we had the same Pokemon in the previous one, but he was Dragon. Now we've got a Fighting type Gibble with the Ascension. We've got Gabite with Fighting type, and we have Garchomp with Fighting type. Now to me, this makes it a lot better uh, because you can use Strong Energy if you're playing this in Expanded. You can use Karina. You can do a lot of other things with this guy. Um, it's a little bit more available and not available, but a little bit more luxurious. I guess it is. With, like again, with Strong Energy is the big one. Um, so you do get to change up your energy points. Uh, you're still gonna probably run Lucario, Cynthia's, like, it's still gonna be the same deck type, but instead of running Dragon, you're gonna run Garchomp, and you can still, now you can run Strong Energy. So there's a bit more damage output there as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, next up we have the Toxicroak, which I don't mind the artwork. He's kind of cool in that regard. Uh, he has Poison Jab. Uh, for one fighting, and I believe this guy had a psychic variant in the previous one. Don't cap me on it. I don't remember uh, He has 30 damage your opponent's active Pokemon is poisoned. Okay, and then he's got sell a score 50 damage if any of your psychic Pokemon were knocked out By damage from an attack during your opponent's next uh, last turn this attack does have any more damage So you can hit for hit me for 120 damage with settle the score for colorless energy um He's not going to be great. Maybe pre-release card, but that's about it. Uh, we do have a new Pancham, so that does tell us that a Pangoro is on the way. Uh, we've got Binacle and Barbaral. Bar -bar or sorry, Barbarical. Uh, he's got 7 shock, 1 fighting a colors, 30 damage. If you have 7 cards in your hand, your opponent's active Pokemon is paralyzed. Um, was there a water type variant of these in the last set? I don't remember. Again, I don't remember all of them. And then you also have Claw Slash, 90 damage for one fighting and two colors. So, not a great card at all, anyway. Uh, we do have that second fossil coming up, though, being Tyrant and Tyrantrum. First off, I really love the artwork of this card. I personally really love Tyrantrum, so this is going to be a cool card for me. It's not as good as Rampardos or anything, uh, but he has Tyranno Head. If you have the same amount of or fewer Pokemon in play than your opponent, this attack does 60 more damage to your opponent's active, and it takes 30 less damage from attacks. So as long as you follow your opponent's uh, Pokemon like pool, uh, you are pretty much in a better state. Um, He's got Crunch for two fighting and a colorless. This hits for 160 if his ability is on, 100 damage if it's just natural. And you have to discard an energy, and you do get to discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. I do apologize, I thought it was from us. But discarding an energy from your opponent's active is actually much better. So Crunch isn't bad at all. 
Uh, will he be competitive? No, I think it's because he's a stage 2, but he does have some cool leverage and I might try him out eventually. Uh, next up is Halucha. I love the artwork on this guy. Um, though I don't think he's overly anything great. He does have high jump kick for one fighting, so he'll do 20 damage. Free fall, 3 colors, 80 minus attack damage is reduced by 20 for each energy in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. So if he's a heavy Pokemon, you're doing nothing. So essentially, if he's got 4 energy retreat, you're going to actually do 0 damage. This makes Halucha very un reliable because it's literally based on your opponent's active um, and, and even then 80 damage is not a lot so Halucha unfortunately you're not making the cut this time uh, we do have a new Zygarde in the puppy form actually we'll have three Zygardes but that's besides the point uh, this one here has Earth Aura don't apply weakness and resistance for damage from this Pokemon's attacks so we're never gonna hit for weakness we're never gonna be hit for resistance um, but we'll always do 30 damage with Peacemaker uh, so for one fighting energy, we'll do 30, and if your opponent has any Ultra Beasts in play, this deck does 30 more damage. Whoopee, he's hitting me for 60. This might be just as underwhelming as the Halucha, because we can't even hit for weakness here. So no weakness, nothing going on, just if we have an Ultra Beast in play, we'll hit for 60 for one fighting. Which really ain't that bad in terms of energy cost, but not a great card. Um, next up we have 50% Zygarde. Uh, he has Glare for two colorless. We're going to do 20 damage to get to the coin. If heads, eh, you're going to paralyze. Cool. And uh, then you have Calm Strike, one fighting, two colorless, 60 damage. If you use your GX attack this game, this attack does 60 more damage. I don't know if this partners up with Bonnie at all because I don't know how Bonnie works just yet. And we're going to get to that in a second. Um, but, like, I don't know if a Bonnie will switch it over and then you can't Calm Strike for that max damage. But it doesn't matter if you're going to be using that, you're not exactly going to Bonnie anyway. Uh, speaking about the Bonnie card, here comes Zygarde GX. Now this card looks amazing, and I'm not even in full screen here. I'm going to bring him down. There he goes. Much better. He looks awesome. Definitely one of the cards I want to go for in this set. Um, I think this one brings me back to Antreezy. Antreezy, if you still watch some of these old videos, hit a like because we're talking about you. Um... Zygarde GX is a fantastic card, in my opinion. He's got Cell Connector for 2 colorless, 50 damage. You get to attach 2 fighting energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. This means you do want to try and find a way to get energy into your discard uh, before going for Cell Connector, because then you can use Land's Wrath, which is 2 fighting, 2 colorless, and 130 damage. Um, which isn't too bad. That is 2 shot potential on some stuff, uh, which is really, actually on most stuff, which isn't actually too bad in this current meta. Um, I wish his HP was a little higher considering he, although he is a basic, actually, no, never mind. He is a basic. 200 HP is awesome. Uh, but then he has Judgment GX. Same cost as Land's Wrath, but you hit for 150, and during your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes no damage from your opponent's, uh, from your, the attacks of your opponent's GX or EX Pokemon. So, yes, they can hit me with that Alolan Ninetales or Hoopa that they're trying to block me with, but they can't hit me with those big attackers that they're trying to. And we'll get back to this card later. Like I mentioned, Bonnie is a card in the set, but we'll get to it in a little bit that helps out the Zygarde line. Um, next up is a Prism Star that a lot of people are really excited for, actually, and that is Diancy Prism Star. Um, it seems a little underwhelming at first, but when you remember that we have Regirock uh, EX right now in play, this card does do quite a bit. Now, of course, you can only run one of these being as it's Prism Star. Uh, but it has the ability Princess Veil. Vale. If this Pokemon is on your bench, your fighting Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. This is good because now our Zygarde can hit for that 150 with Relance Wrath, 170 with Judgment, do it a little bit more, and then of course add your Choice Band or your Strong Energy or anything. You can hit for some really nice numbers, but unfortunately, of course, the downside to Diancy Prism Star, you can only have one, and when it does hit the discard pile, it is activated into the Lost Zone. So keep that in mind when choosing this one over Regirock GX, or sorry, EX. Um, that's your choice. Now, of course, when we hit rotation, Diancy is the only one you're going to have anyway, so keep it in mind. Uh, we've got a new Lycanroc puppy, uh, being the midday form. Um, we've got Dangerous Rogue, one fighting, one colorless. We'll do 20 damage, uh, plus 20 more damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, which isn't too bad for two color uh, for one fighting and a colorless. Uh, and then you've also got a Cell Rock, 100 damage. He's not like 
He's not going to be in your deck. But he's not bad. And considering this is a promo card, I think he's going to be, like, for pre-release, I think he's actually going to be pretty good. Because two energy isn't too bad. And your opponent, especially in pre-release, is going to try and set up a bunch of Pokemon to try and get them going. Uh, so you can do some pretty decent damage. And then you've also got a Cell Rock if you want a consistent flat rate of 100 damage for two fighting in a colorless. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. Uh, next up, we do have the almighty Buzzwall. Look at him. That is a fantastic artwork there. Uh, he's got Sledgehammer for one fighting energy. Uh, you'll do 30 damage. Uh, if your po opponent has four prize cards remaining, this attack does 90 more damage. So this one's a little bit more easier to get to. Your opponent has taken one GX Pokemon or EX. Um, and now you can hit for 120 for one fighting energy. That's actually pretty good. Uh, then you also have Swing Around, 2 Fighting, and a Colorless, 80 damage. Uh, you get to flip 2 coins, the sack does 20 more damage for each head. So you have a maximum of 120. Essentially, I'm going to hit for 120 with sl uh, Sledgehammer. Remember, this can only be used while your opponent has 4 prizes remaining. Or I can hit for 120 with Swing Around. Not bad, he's definitely going to be a one of in your deck uh, if you, if you want to run him uh, to get that little bit of extra damage off in certain situations. Uh, next off, we have that Pangoro we were talking about. We, do we did see the Pancham. I'm not the biggest on the artwork. I like it, but I don't like it. Uh, it's not my favorite Pangoro. Um, for one Dark, one Colorless, we're going to have a Frenzied Punch. So we'll have 50 damage. If this Pokemon has any damage counters on it, this attack does 50 more damage. Both your this Pokemon and your opponent's active Pokemon are now confused. So, status effect, potential to do more damage, 50 damage naturally. It's not terrible. Um, it's actually got some cool stuff behind it. And then you've got Double Stamp, two Dark Energy, one Colorless. You're going to hit for 80. Uh, and then you get to flip two coins. And this attack does 40 more damage for each head. So you can hit for that 160, which actually isn't too bad for a Pangor. So we'll see how that goes. Now, this guy here, I'm losing my voice. This guy here looks absolutely amazing. I love the moon. I love the gloss through it. I'm actually kind of excited to get this card at some point in my life. He looks awesome. Uh, he's got 180 HP, so I'm pretty much the same as his uh, EX variants, I think. And then you have Absorbed Life, one dark. You get to do 20 damage, just 20, nothing over the top. And you get to heal this Pokemon for the same amount of damage you did to your opponent's active. So if you got a Choice Band on here and you hit for 50, you heal 50. Not too terrible. Not great, but not too terrible. And then you've got Evil Sonic, three colorless, uh, 100 damage. So we're not knocking on a lot of Pokemon with this guy. Uh, the stack damage isn't affected by weakness or resistance. We're definitely not knocking on a lot of stuff with this guy. Death count. One dark energy. If your opponent's active Pokemon has exactly four damage counters on it, it is knocked out. Well, 4 damage counters is 40 damage, so I could run this with Greninja, but I would have to only hit Frogadiers to get this on one turn. Else I need to hit 2 Absorb Lifes without a damage booster before going into death count. I'm not a fan of his playstyle. Of course, let me know if there's any combos in the comments section that you're thinking of with the Veltal GX, if he's actually going to be good in a deck. Um, of course, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Uh, next up is Guzzlord. Look at that menacing power behind him. He's trying to consume everything in the world. He just is so hungry. Um, he's got King's Valley for four dark energy. Uh, you're going to hit for 160. If you have six, four, or two prizes remaining, discard the top ten cards of your deck. So we do not want to take the first prize with this guy. So this way we need to fall down to five prizes and then hit on odd numbers um, for this not to really hit us too hard. Else we're going to be doing so much damage to ourselves it's insane. I don't know. He's cool. I think he'll be kind of fit in the Guzzlord kind of thing because you can do hit. Like you can hit for like 160. But at the same point you already have Hoopa who is already a dark type that is like your, your counter to uh, GX Pokemon. So I don't know if I'd run this over him but let me know. You think it'll be okay? Uh, next up, we've got Empoleon. We've seen Empoleon do quite a bit of nice work in Ultra Prism. 
Uh, I've been trying to run it actually over on Twitch recently. Um, I still have a lot of work to go, but being a Steel type opens them up to a lot of options, specifically like Magnazone. Um, he can be Solgaleo partnered. You know, there's a whole lot of things that can happen here. Um, he runs Total Command, one metal, one colorless, 20 damage, his is 20 damage, times the number of Pokemon in each player's bench. Um, he hits more weaknesses, he'll hit Glaceon, he'll hit uh, Glaceon. Um, then you've got Whirlpool here, two metal, a colorless, 90 damage, discard an entry from your opponent's active Pokemon. Likelihood is, you're going to always go Total Command. Um, we've seen him be an amazing Pokemon, will he do well on the metal side? Let me know! Do you prefer the water or the metal type in this? Because the partners are obviously going to be a little different. Uh, next up, we are getting the Steel type version of Dialga GX. Uh, we have seen him in the past. Uh, we have Clock Up, one metal, draw cards until you have six cards in your hand, which is really good uh, as a startup. Uh, you have Shred, one metal, two colorless, 80 damage. This attack's uh, damage is not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So even though our Zygarde was, say, protected, it's still going to take 80. Uh, and then we've got a really cool uh, GX attack here, although it does cost a lot in Timeless GX. 3 metal, 2 colorless. You will hit for 150 damage. However, once this turn is over, it is your turn again. So you will get 2 turns out of this. Um, your Timeless attack, obviously your Timeless GX is going to be your one shot, and then you go into your main attacker, whether it be uh, Solgaleo like or... Um, Don Wing, er, uh, sorry, not Don Wings, uh, the other one. Duskmane, Necrozma, thank you, you guys have shouted at me, I finally got it. Um, uh, unless it's your Duskmane, Necrozma, you can kind of switch in, there you go, you get, you're gonna get a knockout here, uh, it's a pretty cool way to do it. Um, <clears throat> next up we do have Forges, we're in the Fairies now, we're starting to make our way, I think we're over half now, I really do hope so, because we're already hitting almost an hour here. Uh, we have Florges here. With that wonderful gift, once during your turn, you may flip a coin. If heads, put an item card from your discard pile on top of your deck. Uh, not bad. Um, to get a stage two, you're gonna get to choose your card. I'd rather run Sylveon because Sylveon now get like although I do take another prize out of it, I get to search the deck for whichever three I want. Now, sure, my opponent can end. Um, and in, in, in an ends case, the floor just... No, I wouldn't, because I'd still shuffle. So, yeah, there's nothing, in my opinion, that's better than for, for floor just over Sylveon GX. Um, even though the, this guy'd be, like, a sitter on the bench and you could kind of choose stuff. But it really wouldn't work in that case. Um, next up is Sylveon, which has actually got a fantastic little art. Uh, I'm not usually the biggest on this kind of artwork, but on Sylveon it really works because of the colors. Uh, it fits in with the moon and... It fits in with the wisps of the, the wind. It's really pretty. Um, it has Wink for one colorless. Uh, your opponent reveals their hand, and you may discard a supporter card you find there. If you do, use the effect of that supporter as the effect of this attack. This is something cool. Um, I do not see it being splashed into Sylveon GX. It's, again, very different format. Yes, you get rid of that supporter out of your opponent's hand. However... I'm wasting a turn to get my Magical Ribbon going and getting myself into stall base, so I can't see it being used there. Maybe is something in Gardevoir, but I don't think so. It also has Magical Shot for 40, we'll never see that. Uh, moving on to Dedene, I don't like this. Let me know if you guys actually like the artwork of this guy. I'm not a fan of this kind of extorted artwork. Uh, I do realize he's eating, and that's why he has the puffed out cheeks, and he's, you know, he's like, oh, did, did you catch me? Like, I, I get the point of it, it's just not my favorite artwork. Uh, he has Find a Friend, search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. So you don't even get it on the bench! Not even that good! Uh, then you've got Electric Chain, two colorless, uh, 30 damage. This attack does 30 more damage if you have a Lightning Pokemon on your bench. Uh, was there a lightning version of this that had the opposite where you had a fairy? I don't remember. Uh, sorry about that, guys. There's a lot of not remembering since we didn't actually cover Ultra Prison. It's been a while since we played TCGO in general. Uh, next up we have the Kalefa with the, um, he doesn't look all that entertained. He's got Metal Sound, one, col uh, one colorless energy. The opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Not bad. Uh, and Fairy Lock, uh, one colorless. We're going to do 20 damage, so if I get Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. I can't see this card actually being used. 
Um, next up, we've got the other ho or the other Kalos uh, legendary here, being Xerneas. Um, definitely, their artworks are amazing. But is he better than his counterpart, or is Zygarde just literally the best of the three? I'm pretty sure Zygarde's the best of the three. So we've got Run Through. We're going to do, for one colorless, 20 damage to attack this, 20 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. In my opinion, this is a lot better than being able to heal. And it's kind of weird. I actually find this more deathly than Yveltals. Like, I'm doing damage and damage. Um, I would have actually kind of understood if the life Pokemon was able to absorb the energy um, to keep itself healthy. And it was all about kind of life gain. Um, but either way. And then it's got our Aurora Horn for two colorless. Or sorry, two fairy, a colorless. It'll do 120 damage. Nothing really over the top on that one. It's missing some numbers, but again, if you add a choice band to that, that's 150, 150. You will two shot with Aurora Horn, so I guess it's not too bad. Uh, but then you have Sanctuary GX, two, two fairy, one colorless. Move all damage counters from each of your Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. Now let's be honest here, we're not usually going to retreat and get a whole ton of stuff, but if you are using something like an Earthquake Torterra that has, you know, it, it's done like 60 damage to all of your Pokemon, then Sanctuary GX comes into play and then you can just kind of knock something out with it. But other than that, Sanctuary, Sanctuary GX is going to be very situational, could be cool, uh, but overall the rest of the card isn't worth really running. Uh, it's not a main attacker, it doesn't have much support going on. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't see a whole lot going on for it, but again, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Is it going to be a great card? Is it going to be something that you are interested in? I don't know. Uh, we've got some Goomies here, guys. Uh, this one here does have the ability, and we'll go over that one because I like the ability once more. If this Pokemon is your active, the attack cost of your opponent's Pokemon attacks is one colorless more. So it does slow your opponents down a little bit, I guess. Uh, but he's only got 40 HP, so be careful. He is he is fragile. Uh, the other one has 10 more HP. Just think of it that way. Um, uh, but we're going for Gudra here, and his artwork looks kind of cool. Uh, if you're a big fan of Gudra, make sure to pick him up. Uh, but he has hydration as his ability. Whenever you touch a water energy from your hand to this Pokemon, heal 20 from this Pokemon. And then he has Soaking Horn. Uh, one water, one fairy, one colorless. Unfortunately, he is not getting away from the double colors like a lot of the dragons we've seen have. Um, he is going to hit for 80 though. If this Pokemon is healed, uh, this attack will do 80 more damage. So you do get the damage, but again, you're going to have to drop some energy to actually keep him going. So is that going to be worth it? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't see him being all that competitive. Ultra Necrozma. This thing looks beautiful. It looks intimidating. He's crystalline. He's got light going all through him. He looks so cool. Um, he's a basic type with 190 HP, so only Zygarde right now has taken that uh, past that with the 200. Uh, we have the Photon Geyser. One Psychic, one Metal. Uh, 20 damage. Uh, discard all basic psychic energies from this Pokemon. This attack does 80 more damage for each psychic energy you discard this way. Uh, that Malamar is going to be a huge opener for this guy because if you set up like 2 or 3 Malamar, you can just grab 3 psychic energy, put it onto him. Uh, that'll be 8, 16, 24, plus the, that's 260 damage that you're able to hit as long as your Malamars are up. Um, so your opponent might actually opt to switch out and take out those Malamars because that is where your Ultra Necrozma is going to be doing the damage. And then you have Destructive Light, one Psychic, one Metal. Uh, this attack can only be used if there are six or less total prize cards remaining in the play. Uh, play six damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. So end game result, we're talking about like either we're near the end or my opponent's getting close and we're trying to set the table up a bit. So let's put six damage counters on everything our opponent has put into play. Um, it's kind of cool. I don't th think it'll ever do more damage worth than Photon Geyser, but it can set you up th for those numbers if, for example, your opponent does take out a Malamar um, and you're just trying to set up for that win. You've already got the damage down. You only need one more knockout. He's, say, taking out one of three Malamars at this point, and you're like, okay, he's going for it. I know that Photon Geyser is going to try and not knock something out next turn, so this is going to set me up to be able to do it. So It's a really cool supportive GX attack. I don't know how often you're going to get it off, but overall, I think it's kind of cool. Photon Geyser, definitely a much better attack. Uh, definitely something to keep an eye out for. Uh, we are going to get our next Prism Star, and I'll be honest with you, 
It is Osseus, uh, uh, Arceus, I'm sorry, Arceus, our, our god-type Pokemon. Uh, he has that ability, the first commandment, prevent all effects of your opponent's attacks, excluding damage done to this Pokemon, so you can't be hit by confusion, paralysis, nothing like that. It's cool. You're good to go. Um, he has Trinity Star, one colorless energy, 30 damage. You can only use this attack if you have a Grass, Water, and Lightning Pokemon on your bench. And you get to search your deck for up to three basic energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon any way you like. I don't like this card because there are too many requirements. Grass, Water, and Lightning. First off, where is the Fire? Why is it Lightning and not Fire? Like, that just don't make sense in my brain um but you need all three okay so the only way i can see this really working out is in like vikabulu where you're using remoraid and auxiliary instead of tapu lele or like a draw entrance so i don't know there's not a lot of competitive stuff that would use this but again let me know in the comments if you think arceus will become something worthwhile and something to note i don't think so personally uh, next up, we've got probably a, a, one of the biggest biggest cards to look out for. It's going to be Diggersby. I'm just kidding with you. Uh, it's got Mountain Rays for 3 colorless, 60 damage. If, you may do 40 more damage if you do discard the top two cards of your deck. So, Bunnelby from Phantom Fort... Was it... No, sorry. It was from... Um, it was the one with Groudon. My brain remembers the set. Primal Clash? That's the one. Um, whereas, like, Bone will be used to discard our opponent's cards. Digger Speed's making us discard, so it's not really that great. Uh, then you've got t Continuous Rock Tumble. Four colors, so just two double colors energies, guys. Uh, you will do 80 damage. You get to flip a coin until you get Tails. You will do 80 damage each time. This actually could be a one-shot king. You could literally bring this up, and every single time you flip two, three, four, five, six coin flips and win. Um, or you could flip tails every single time and do absolutely nothing. So, Diggers B, keep an eye out for. Uh, next up, we have a new Furfru. Uh, and Furfru kind of, come on, kind of keeps up with his old um, uselessness of being a basic deck kind of card. Uh, you have Return for 1 Colorless, 20 damage. You may draw cards until you have 5 cards in your hand. Cool. Cool. I recall there was another GX card earlier in the set that lets you do that as well. I'd rather just use that. Now, of course, this is colorless and not steel, but either way. My baby is coming back. My baby is coming back, and this Noibet's actually really good. Uh, Ram for 10, not so good. But Destructive Sound, if I drop a double colorless energy down on this guy right here, right now, you get to look at your opponent's hand and discard all item cards you find there. So if I go second and my opponent hasn't used up a lot of their stuff where they just recently end and they don't, they're trying to hold on their Ultra Balls or their Aqua Patches or anything like that, and they're like, no, 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 Destructive Sound. Let's remove everything. It adds to Noivern GX's possibility to disrupt. Uh, so Noibat, in my opinion, is a really cool basic. Um, of course, it's my baby, so I'm going to say that regardless. Keep an eye out for it. Um, we do have a brand new Noivern. I'm not too worried about Noivern and himself. Uh, I think I'll still use the GX over this guy. Uh, he has Supersonic, 1 colorless, 20 damage, your opponent's active Pokemon is confused, which again, for colorless energy isn't too bad. Um, and then for 3 colorless, you do get Resonance, 70 damage, if the defending Pokemon is confused still, the stack does 70 more damage. So we can hit for 140 for 3 colorless energy, but I'd rather just use the good old stall of the Noibat and stall of Noivern GX and just be better. So hopefully they get some more um, potential out of it and it'll be... A little bit better come come rotation uh all right guys that is it for pokemon we are finally into the items and we're finally getting our way down this we are hitting an hour now and well maybe not so much an hour for you guys but it's hitting an hour for me uh let's start with the b string this thing actually looks really cool i like how they did the artwork on it uh, you may only play this card if your opponent has three or more prize cards, sorry, three or four prize cards remaining. Uh, so it does specify, which is kind of cool. But you do get to search your deck for up to two basic energies, reveal them, and attach them to your, one of your Ultra Beast Pokemon. So, again, if your opponent did take a prize on the previous turn, being a knockout of, say, a GX, you get to Beast Ring the next turn and really set up. So you do have that opportunity to try and go for it. It is basic energy, though, so you can't can't cheat the system and go for like a unit energy or you can't go for 
uh, double colorless energy or something like that. You have to go for basic energy. Now, the lovely lasso we were talking about with Psygard is here. She is very happy to be part of this game, finally. Her brother's been in it for a long time, or in comparison to her, a long time. So it was nice to see that Bonnie did make her way in here. Um, you can only play this card if there's a stadium card in play. Fine. Discard a stadium. Okay. During this turn, your Zyger GX may use its GX attack, uh, even if you have already used a GX attack this game. That's actually really good. Because again, his GX attack hits for 150 and prevents all effects of attacks done to him on that next turn. He becomes immune. So to be able to reoccur this is awesome because you may not need to use that GX attack every turn. You might just go for a knockout, not worry about the damage on the one turn, and then use the GX attack again to get a knockout or to do whatever you need to do. It's really cool. I like Bonnie. Um, I think this card will be really good with obviously just Saiger GX, but it's cool. And yeah, it doesn't af it doesn't affect the other Saiger at all. So don't mind me. Anyway, moving on. We have Crasher Wake making his way in here. Um, you get to discard two water energy from your hand in order to play this card. Uh, and you get to search your deck for up to two cards and put them in your hand. So ditch, essentially ditch two, draw two. But you can then use your Aqua Patches to get those water entries onto the playing field. So Crasher Waken itself is actually a pretty good supporter for water Pokemon. Um, again, it's really cool combo-y sort of stuff that really comes into situational, but I can definitely see at least Crash Awake being used in water decks. Uh, next up, we have the lovely Diantha, our champion of the set. Um, you can only play this card if you have one of your fairy Pokemon, uh, sorry, one of your fairy Pokemon were knocked out during your last turn. Uh, you get to choose two cards from your discard pile and put them in your hand. So, oh, you murdered my Ralts. Okay, I'm going to just go and grab two cards of my discard pile, whatever I want. It doesn't matter what, I'm just going to grab them. I might even grab my Ralts back just because you knocked it out. I'm feeling a little salty right now. I'm going to do it. Diantha is actually really good. Uh, it, it's situational, of course, and it comes down to when you play it, how you play it, and what situation will I need Diantha over a draw supporter. Um, think of her like a VS Seeker for other cards. Like You can at least get them back in your hand. Uh, you might need that Choice Band, or you might need that uh, De-Evolution Spray. I don't know what you're running in your fairy decks nowadays, guys. Um, but she's really cool because she can help you out in a bad situation. Um, next up is the Enne Porter. I apologize for our pronunciation. This thing looks kind of weird. Uh, you move a special energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon to another one of your Pokemon. Uh, one of their Pokemon. This is actually really good because strong energy is still in play. Uh, just for a bit longer. Uh, but like things like strong energy, for instance, you can take it and then move it to a non-fighting type. Now that card will get ditched. And your opponent is essentially gone out of an energy. Now, with that being said, I could have just run an enhanced hammer and been fine. Um, um, I might have just rather have run an enhanced hammer. I don't really see a play I would want to use uh, a moving of a special energy, other than like a again to get rid of it. Other than, but again, I could just enhance hammer because it has to be a special energy. Remember that. Uh, it could also be unity energy, uh, like unit energies, where like you're looking for specific colors, but then you could just drop it on the top of Lele or something, and that'd be kind of cool. But overall, I don't see it being all that necessary. Uh, next up is the fossil excavation map. Uh, search your deck for, or discard pile for one unidentified fossil. Uh, show it to your opponent and put it into your hand. If you search your deck, shuffle it. Uh, this is cool because you can get your. Uh, your fossils back from the discard pile as well, so if for whatever reason you did have to ditch one earlier or it got knocked out, you can get it back, no problem, and get your streamline going again using the uh, fossil excavation map. Uh, and fossils don't seem to be too weak, like again, we are seeing a lot of prevalence in Rampardos, uh, so maybe this will be something you want to put in that deck. Next up we are getting an old supporter, something to replace N when N does rotate in a few months. Um, you get, each player shuffles their hand and draw four cards. Uh, this brings me back to the days of my Noivern uh, with Echolocation where we had to have the same amount of cards in hand. Uh, I love that. I ran Judge all the time back then. So I wonder if there'll be something new coming out that I'll love Judge with. I don't know. Kind of hoping for a new Noivern GX, just saying. Uh, we already have one, so it won't happen. Um, next up is Lady. Very, very... 
bland name. I'm going to say that now. Uh, you get to search your deck for up to four basic energy cards. Reveal them and put them in your hand. So I'm going to have four basic energy cards in my hand. That is really good if I'm, say, playing Fire, uh, especially Volcanion, where I can ditch two, drop one, maybe ditch the third, or use, like, a uh, Scorched Earth to draw cards off of the other one. Uh, so it gives you a lot of options. It's not a bad supporter at all. Uh, again, it comes down to situations, but I really do think it's a pretty cool one of or two of, depending on the situation or a deck that you're going to be running it in. Next up, we've got the next... Um, okay, that really made it easier for you guys to see. And that is Lysander's Prism Star. You can't have more than one Prism Star of the same name in your deck. If a Prism Star would go to the discard, yada yada yada, it goes to the Lost Zone. Uh, for each of your Fire Pokemon play, put the same number of cards from your opponent's discard pile into their Lost Zone. So if you do not want your opponent to play any certain cards that are in their discard pile, then get rid of them. Lysander is pretty good at that, and now I'm a magic player, that's a very good ability. I'm really interested to see how well that's going to be playing out in this game, uh, because that is absolutely phenomenal. Some people do like to play out of the discard piles, and if we do get a lot of uh, discard manipulation in the future, I can definitely see all, uh, Lysander's uh, Prism Star being something more of an influence later in the game. Uh, so this card does seem to be pretty good. I just don't know if it'll be good now. Um, then we've got Lysander's Labs. Uh, it, it's got the warps and everything in it. You can pretty much see it. I've got this off the screen. Um, you've got Pokemon tools in play have no effect. So it really does stop Silvali because it means Silvali is a... Uh, plates don't do anything. It stops Choice Fans, stops Floatstones. It's a really cool Lysander. Like, it is a really cool stadium. Uh, it will see play because people love to see stall and item cards aren't necessarily something that stall decks want to have against them like especially if you're playing something like sylveon where you want to keep your opponent from hitting you for as much damage as possible this can do that um next up is the metal frying pan i actually commented on this back when i saw it originally does pokemon not have a lot of new items coming out like did they really need to create a frying pan card and there's a lot of stuff coming out that's just like whoo you guys are needing to come up with something cool. Anyway, the Metal Frying Pan uh, is a metal card. Metal Pokemon this card is attached to, takes 30 less damage from attacks, and has no weakness. So, thankfully, the, the tournament I'm going to in Toronto is before Forbidden Light is active. So, this is not going to be active because there's a few decks that I'm thinking of running. And if I'm going up against a Steel Deck with a Fire Deck, I may not want to see this. Uh, next up we have the Mysterious Treasure. It actually looks kind of pretty. Um, you get to discard a card from your hand in order to play this. Uh, you do get to search your deck for a Psychic or Dragon Pokemon. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your deck. So essentially an Ultra Ball, but I only have to discard one card. That's actually really good. Really, really good. And yeah, it's it may be specific, but if you're going to play Psychic or Dragon, like that's what's going to be in your deck, other than maybe a Lele. So, other than Ultra Ball trying to go for Lele, you can just use Mysterious Treasure and hold on to your resources. I like it. Um, we've got the Ultra Recon Squad. Uh, can we get this guy up here? Yes, we can. There we go. Nicely done. Uh, you get to discard up to two Ultra Beasts from your hand, then draw three cards for each card you discard this way. Uh, so you can technically draw up to six cards off of this. Uh, but do you really want to ditch your Ultra Beasts? I don't know. I'll see how the meta plays for that or what goes on. But it is a pretty interesting uh, supporter for sure. Uh, then we've got Ultra Space. Look at that. We get the ride. You get to go into these warp little warps in time and space. Kind of go through them. Uh, once during each player's turn, that player may search their deck for an Ultra Beast, reveal it and put it into their hand, then shuffle that player's deck. So they definitely have a lot of stuff for Ultra Beast. Um, really excited to see what they end up doing with this, because uh, it does help things like Buzzwall, it does help Naganondel. Um, I'm really interested to see how they are going to do this, because it's not a basic, like I can go for Poipol one turn, go for Naganondel the next, um, I can go for my Pheromoses or my uh, Zerkatries depending on the setup. Uh, it's a really cool stadium. I like it. I believe Unidentified Fossil is a reprint. I'm not 100% sure. I believe it was in the previous one for uh, Rampardos and the other one. I don't remember. I, I just know Rampardos. Um, either way, it lets you play your Tyrants and your uh, more. This is essentially your basic. Um, and then you go up from that, which is cool. Uh, now we've got the Beast Energy Prism Star card. Um... So we can only have one of them in our deck, and it provides colorless energy. While this card is attached to an Ultra Beast, it provides every type of energy, but provides only one energy at a time. 
So it's essentially a, a rainbow energy, but you don't take 10 damage from it. Uh, the attack of the Ultra Beast this card is attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Now that's where I like it. That is exciting. Uh, because it does increase, say, Naganadel's attacks a little bit. Um, it'll boost other mods as well. And again, it is any color you want, but only one at a time. And of course, you can only want, run one Beast Energy, so why not do it, right? Beast Energy is going to be a great card in those Ultra Beast uh, decks. Uh, we are going to showcase our next uh, unit energy being, it looks like it's Fairy Fighting and Dark Sphere. Uh, you get to provide, it provides colors when this card is attached to a Pokemon. This card provides Fighting, Dark, and Fairy energy, but provides only one energy at a time. Cool. Alright, so at this point, we've gone through the set list. What are your thoughts on the set overall? I think there's a lot of fun stuff in here. It's... I think it has a lot of really cool things that are going to get people to try new things. I really like the idea of the Ultra Beasts um, getting a lot of synergy for themselves, being the Beast Energy Prism, whether it be the uh, Ultra Space, uh, the Beast Ring. There's a lot of stuff that can really make them a lot of fun, a lot of things that can just make them work and be more synergetic. I don't know how to say it past that. Uh, I really am interested in Zygarde. There's a lot of cool things, again, with him being Bonnie and obviously more fighting support being Diancy. So let me know in the comments at this point what you guys are most excited for in this set. Uh, I am going to go into the full arts and stuff, but for those of you who do not want to watch at this point, you, you can cut here. Anyway, going into full arts, we have the full art Palkia. Probably not my favorite full art, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, it's, it's not the one that I'm going for. Uh, Greninja, on the other hand, looks pretty awesome. I do like the colors. Now, unfortunately, they do blend in together, but he looks pretty intimidating coming like right at you, right at the front of the card and as he's jumping at you. It does look pretty good. Excuse me. Uh, now, this guy here, I know the card is small for you guys, uh, but it's definitely going to be one of the ones I want to go for. I really like the spiral in the background, and I love the colors, and I like how it, like, it makes him t intimidating. So, he is going to be definitely one of the ones I'm going for. I don't care if he's not really playable, I just kind of want one. Uh, we are getting Lucario GX's full art in this set as well, so for those of you who have not picked up promos, this is the opportunity you can get the full arts. Uh, he is a fantastic card, so don't forget to look out for him. Of course, not very playable at a pre-release because Riolu is not in the set. Um, next up, we have Zygarde himself. Look at that powerhouse! Um, he doesn't. I, I actually do like the dynamics of his original GX card more so than the GX full art. But with that being said, he still looks pretty cool. I wouldn't mind having these guys in my deck. Um, Yveltal does have a pretty all right full art as well. Pretty nice in my opinion. Uh, we have the Dialga who's pretty much galloping at you trying to get that timeless uh, GX going off. Um, again, not really my favorite here. Uh, I do like Yveltal. Yveltal's always got that color balance because he's not, a, like he, he, even though he's a fairy type, he's not pink. So he gets that nice color ratio of blue on the red. It looks great. Um, I think it'll be pretty cool. And I like uh, Necrozma's here as well. Uh, the, the blandness and the brightness of Necrozma is countered out by the green flash and Ultra Beast power. And keep in mind, he is, I believe, an Ultra Beast in this. So you can use all those powers to get, um, get him going. So keep that in mind too. Uh, our supporters of Full Art are going to be Bonnie. Bonnie was one of the big ones, uh, again, for Zygarde. So not really surprised here. Uh, we are going to have Crasher Wake, who looks pretty cool. Uh, we have, of course, Dayeth is going to get her own, and I'm, I think she was due time for this. Uh, so exciting to see that she's getting it. Uh, the Ultra Recon Squad is getting theirs as well. And then, of course, we just hit the Rainbow Rare cards, uh, which are essentially the same as what we've seen. I will go over them anyway, just for those of you, but I will go a little bit faster. And again, this guy looks pretty cool. Uh, it kind of looks like... um. Like, uh, what am I trying to think of? Uh, I'm going to show you Lucario and everybody as we go. Uh, a, not a mosaic, a, uh, a hieroglyphic is the word. Uh, then we've got Yveltal, uh, we've got Dialga here. Look at all these powerful mons showcasing up. Like, I do like that they're going into some weird dynamics with the uh, sheen for them. 
like, look at this one. Like, if you definitely get this one, like, everything will be, like, shining around it. It'll definitely look like a rainbow, and I think it's a very good touch for it. And, of course, our secret rare uh, item cards are going to be the Beast Ring, uh, which looks even better, in my opinion, in secret rare. That card's definitely going to be something I'm going to go after uh, if I do play Beast Rings. Uh, this card I really have no interest for. Um, it just doesn't look great. Uh, we are getting Energy Recycler Secret Rare, uh, which is kind of cool. Because uh, I don't believe the Energy Recyclers in the set in general, so that's nice. Uh, we're getting a Secret Rare Frying Pan! Uh, if you guys ever wanted to put that in a deck, now is your time to get it! Um... Uh, we are getting the Mysterious Treasure Secret Rare, which I think actually looks really cool. And of course, we got the Unit Energy uh, as our other Secret Rare. So, with that being said, we have hit just under 120 minutes, or sorry, an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, I think we pretty much said everything we need to about the set. Let me know in the comments section if you guys have made it this far. What is your favorite full art card? Which one are you going to be aiming for the most? I'm going to be obviously going for Naganadel. Uh, that just seems to be the big card for me. Um, but I'll be pretty happy with anything I can get. I'm not really playing IRL too much, so collecting cards in reality isn't going to be a big one. It's going to be uh, Pokemon TCGO, even though I'm playing cards IRL at a regional. So, far about that in mind. Uh, I will catch you guys in the next video. Again, I don't know if we're going to be doing too much po Like, we are bringing back Pokemon content. Not on the regular. I'm not doing, like, three episodes a week. We're not doing that anymore. I got drained out, and I couldn't think of ideas for half of it. But we'll try and produce content as we stream it. So if you guys are interested, make sure to hit that Twitch uh, link down in the comments. That way you can get access to our Twitch. You can watch us play Pokemon or Fire Emblem uh, Heroes. I play a lot of that on there right now. Uh, between the two games, that's really what our channel is all about, uh, as you can see from the videos here. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video, but until then, time out.